Dr. Herbert Spiegel is one of the world's leading experts on hypnosis. He has taught hypnosis at the Columbia University Medical School for over 20 years and is the inventor of the standardized test for measuring a subject's hypnotizability. He believes there is circumstantial evidence that suggests Sirhan Sirhan was hypnotized to kill. The total and complete amnesia that Sirhan demonstrated uh, from the very beginning to this very day suggests strongly that he was A, highly hypnotizable, and B, uh, programmed uh, to perform that act. Hypnosis played a major role in Sirhan's trial. As psychiatrists for the defense and prosecution hypnotized Sirhan at least six times in an effort to unlock his memory. You're right in the kitchen now. In one session under hypnosis, Sirhan was induced to reenact the shooting. Look, Senator Kennedy is here. The psychiatrist reported that Sirhan nearly choked as he relived being strangled, just as in his actual capture. This incident is one of many that Dr. Spiegel found in his review of the court psychiatrist's reports that lead him to believe that Sirhan falls into the highest category of hypnotizability. Only about 5 to 10 percent of the population are that highly hypnotizable. He comes under the category of what might be called the hypnotic virtuosos. In fact, Sirhan's high hypnotizability, which allowed him to slip into spontaneous trances, was the basis of the defense's argument. His lawyers argued that Sirhan involuntarily shifted into a hypnotic trance and therefore carried out the assassination without planning it ahead of time. The possibility that someone else may have hypnotized Sirhan was never presented in court. But Dr. Spiegel believes that the circumstantial evidence, Sirhan's desire to be hypnotized, his extreme compliance under hypnosis, his amnesia to the assassination event, all suggest that Sirhan appears to be an ideal candidate to be hypnotized. But can someone be hypnotized to kill? Yes, it is possible to instruct a highly hypnotizable person to perform many acts, including assassination. For the past 10 years, this eminent Californian lawyer has been investigating the links between hypnosis, the American security agencies, and murder. Can hypnosis be used to influence people to commit illegal or immoral acts? There's generally a folklore that it can't be so used, and I think the reason for the folklore, for one, is to discourage people from trying, and two, because it took a while for hypnosis to establish itself as a valid therapeutic technique. Now that we know that it is a valid therapeutic technique, we can also see that just as it can be used for good, it can be used for evil. For example, in 1954, the four years before the Manchurian Candidate novel had been uh, published, the Central Intelligence Agency had a team to build Manchurian candidates to commit assassinations. And one of the most frightening memos that I've read uh, is a, an experiment that they wanted to run to be able to program somebody to assassinate a foreign head of state or an American official. Surely this is just some conspiracy theory. What evidence is there to really support this? I'm interested in the historical fact. And the, the historical fact for me has come from Central Intelligence Agency documents. And the, the documents definitely established that by 1954, the CIA, or at least the component that did the hypnosis research, was convinced that they could program people into committing assassinations. A more recent experimentation by the Central Intelligence Agency suggests that they have conducted a series of what they call terminal experiments. And these are experiments which will end in the death of the subjects. Uh, in one set of uh, letters from the CIA to a researcher, they asked the researcher if he would be willing to conduct terminal experiments. And the researcher said he'd do it for free.